In this bulletin is Linda Tambuyo heading towards the exit door. Travelers told to pay quarantine fees. And alleged murder trial continues. Social Democratic Liberal Party stalwart Linda Tambuya is on the verge of leaving Sodelpa as she is unhappy by how she and her supporters are being treated. Tambuya recently got into trouble with the party hierarchy after posting on social media as she was unhappy with how the Kandavu constituency were treated and says she will decide on her next political move if nothing changes. Apunisa Wanga Rondovo reports it's getting worse in Sodelpa with three constituencies including Kandavu not being allowed to sit in during the last management board meeting. Linda Tambuya has been put on notice. The party have cautioned her to be, uh, to be just a little careful. It is my place to speak for three reasons. One, I am from Kandavu. Ngavoka says Kandavu was not allowed into the recent management board meeting as they are non-compliant. We value their, their support from the Vanua. But the, the pathway to that is to set up a branch set up a constituency council so that it can legitimize the wishes of the Vanua. So they have not done their job. And to me, that's nothing short of incompetence. They need to pull their stocks up. We pay the general secretary, okay, the management board in the party. Tambuya says it's unjust and the hierarchy is not doing its part, despite being funded by members. The party works for the people. We rely on the people. It's not the other way around. We need them. When pressed on whether she will stay on with the party for the 2022 general election, Tambuya says... Yes, and I continue to have offers from several political parties. But, you know, I, I am not a quitter, you know, and I will try my best. And, and this is me trying my best, which is also for the very first time going public, holding my party accountable. The Sodelpa MP has also revealed the Mbua and Lomoiviti constituencies were also banned from meetings. Tambuya says members needs to be value, as she says she will not be surprised if Kandavu decided to support other political parties. Apeniso Wangarandobu, FBC News. Fijians are now becoming more eager to get the COVID-19 vaccine after the clearing up of misinformation associated with AstraZeneca jabs. The minister, jab, right? Ministry of Health rather says they have also noted a change in people's attitude towards vaccination with more Fijians now turning up to get their jabs. The head of the United Nations in Fiji is taking the lead in promoting the vaccination, a process that government is strongly advocating on. The ministry says misinformation about the AstraZeneca vaccine was a hindrance in the vaccination process is clearing up. We've actually gotten some very good responses. While some have um, uh, asked for like some leaders to get vaccinated and they'll follow it, that's happened. Fijians must pay the cost of their quarantine after they arrive in Fiji on repatriation flights. Health Minister Dr. Foremi Wanganembete says it's a matter between the person quarantined and the facility where they stay during the mandatory two-week period. The minister's comments follow cases where people said they did not know they had to pay for the quarantine cost. I mean, that's a poor excuse, yeah? Mm. That's a poor excuse. I mean, for nearly one year, we paid. And more than a year is more than enough time for somebody who's been stuck to come back. Congo national killer Henry Lusaka has claimed that his wife Jennifer Ann Dows died of an alleged drug overdose. This was revealed in the video of Lusaka's caution interview shown in a Suva High Court. During a review of the video recording of the caution interview, the police read a statement to the accused from the father of the deceased, Christopher Downs. It was heard that Lusaka sent him photos and videos of Jennifer Downs lying in a bedroom with bruises or her face, on her face rather, and coins placed over her eyes. When questioned while Lusaka sent the pictures and videos, he claimed that he wanted to show his former father-in-law that his daughter was allegedly overdosed on cocaine. The 39-year-old man is charged with one kind of murder for allegedly killing his Australian wife in July 2019 at their rented home on Service Street in Suva. The murder trial continues in the High Court today. The public consultations and submission gathering for the review of the three electoral bills continue to draw public interest in the Northern Division. 
Most of the interest is centered on how the elections is conducted and ways the process can be improved so that all Fijians can vote on the day. Eleanor Turangavi reports the consultation is being taken to the rural communities first. The second week of public consultations on the proposed changes to the Electoral Act of 2014, the Electoral Registration of Voters Act of 2012 and the Political Parties Act of 2013 started in Boa yesterday. I'm not actually here representing government or Honorable Buritabu is representing opposition over here. As I stated earlier, this is a parliamentary independent committee. But it is important for the people to actually understand What's going on? What's happening? According to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights, the consultations are being brought to the people so they can better understand and have a say in the proposed changes. For those people, like uh, with uh, disabilities and uh, maybe very retarded, they are eager to vote and they are not able to make to the police station. Uh, what's the arrangement for those uh, disabilities? And some of the proposed changes include a new voter identification card, increased polling stations, confined election period, removal of the restriction on party identification in the national candidates list, prohibition of the use of state resources in party campaigns, and the enforcement of the blackout period. The election is yours, no hours. The consultations continue in board today and will start in the Kaunrove tomorrow. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. The Zingatoka Town Council has planned several developments to make the town more attractive. Local Government Minister Pramila Kumar says they will be putting up an amphitheater to facilitate public gatherings. An amphitheater is an open circular oval building with central space surrounded by tiers of seats for spectators. Kumar says the Chinese government has supported the council in developing the open space. Well, the work should begin uh, soon and it should be completed at least by July of this year. Uh, they also plan to put up a, a bar and a restaurant just next to the old uh, Singatoka Bridge. Up ahead, grandstand tickets sold out. And Serbia applauds local teams for testing PG7. Stay with us. All grandstand tickets to the Coca-Cola games have been sold out. However, officials have petitioned to increase the social gathering capacity from 50 to 80 percent. A total of 3,000 grandstand tickets have been sold, while 3,000 concrete embankment and 4,000 grass embankment tickets are still available. Games officials say the tickets are going fast. Coca-Cola marketing manager Lawrence Tickeram says they're optimistic their request to expand the social gathering capacity will get a good result before the games. We've made an application uh, to the relevant authorities to try and see whether we can get increased capacity and we look forward to those, those, uh, those uh, results. The recent wake-up call for our National Sevens side at the Murray Sevens was a blessing in disguise, according to Wesley Serevi. Many fans are against the idea of having a national side play in local tournaments, but the maestro thinks that's the best solution we have at the moment. Aquila Dama with the details. Serevi says this is the kind of test the national squad needs compared to some international competitions. I believe watching the Dubai Sevens last week and same time watching the Murray Sevens after that, I believe the level of competition in the Murray Sevens I believe was higher than the Dubai Sevens. I saw France was playing, Argentina was playing, Canada was playing and a couple of other African teams. The national team have featured and won local tournaments like the Ului Nakao, Nawaka, Maris and Uprising Sevens, but they return the prize money. A lot of fans have taken to social media saying the national seven squad members should play for their clubs, but many don't realize our border is still closed and players will not feature for their clubs at the Olympic Games. I know that people are saying, uh, oh, they shouldn't play in this competition and uh, what we should think is there's nowhere for them to go to play. You can train as hard as you can, but 
match fitness is very important. That's what they're trying to do. And I ask clubs and I ask people to make sure I keep supporting them. Because we need the gold and we need them to keep training, especially playing competitive rugby. With the, defense. the national squad continues their preparations for the Olympic Games and hopes to get some international exposure before heading to Japan. Akulavama, FBC Sports. Silva Netball Association is focusing on the senior grades known as the Super Grade this season as a training ground for the national team. With the second round to uh, games commencing this week, the association has increased the number of teams in the senior grade from 8 to 12. Association President Georgina Lasanga says they want to contribute to the development of players in the national team. She says younger players need to play for the senior grade to help develop their skills. You'll expect the full eight grades participating. We have eight uh, grades this year, uh, ranging from our minor right up to our seniors and our major grade, which is our uh, guys. The Rewanga Basketball Association has got more exciting programs lined up for its dwellers. This comes as its interlane competition ended last night with the finals where Spowat came out as champions in the men's category while the Vui Magics won in the women's. The competition has not only proved successful but has been a medium of bringing the Rewanga community together. Most of the national team or a majority of them is from Rwanda, so they're here giving back their time. Uh, if they're not playing, they're coaching. If not, they're on the bench helping with the officials, but uh, everyone's involved. It's a community effort. Fine apart from afternoon or evening showers, moderate east to southeast winds, moderate sea breeze during the day. That's FBC Morning News. Join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For news you can trust, get the facts from FBC's TV, radio and digital news at fbcnews.com.fj. Take care and good morning.